The original plan and the series of videos that I'm doing on all the animals that I have in my yard <clears throat> was to go ahead and start with like what we started with first, which was chickens. Um, but I think a lot of people that are curious about how I do this in the backyard already have chickens for the most part. So um, those are not questions that I get. Uh, at all anymore really about chickens or the way that I do chickens um, the most questions I get asked about are uh, the rabbits um, because I think people are starting to get the idea that rabbit can be a sustainable source of meat but the thing that I get the most questions is how in the world do I have goats in my backyard in a neighborhood so instead of going with our progression that we started with we're just going to jump right to the end and just tell you how we do goats in our backyard. The idea to get, I never wanted goats when I started doing this at all because I felt like they were pointless and didn't give enough milk and that I would wait until I had land and I could get a cow. Um, but over a period of time, um, goats were more appealing to me and so I started doing research of people who had goats on small spaces. And we, my husband found goats on Craigslist and we bought them and that's kind of how it started. I've had goats in my backyard now for three years um, and it's worked out well. It's, they're a very healthy herd of goats. Um, so before I really get into this, if you're curious about having goats in your backyard and you live in a neighborhood, you have to know what the laws and the ordinances are as far as having livestock. Um, there, stop it. Our neighborhood does not have an HOA. That was actually the builder's fault um, in our neighborhood. And our uh, town does not have any ordinances against livestock. The only um, ordinances that are for livestock is that have to be fenced. Um, ours is double fenced. In order to make good goats, you need a good fencing. And this is the fencing that we have. It's all screwed in. This is uh, you can find this stuff all at Tractor Supply. Um, we did three here because they like to rub up against it. Goats will wear out your fencing. Um, and we just recently had to replace this. So three years with goats and just having to replace the wire on our fence is really, really good. So I'm happy with our fencing choice. This is really good. Make it sturdy. This is about just over four feet high is where we have this yeah so it's just over four feet high I'm almost six foot so about four feet is where this is um, perfect size for smaller goats um, goats can jump very high if they get scared and they like to climb on things they will climb on anything so if you have anything in your goat yard make sure it's away from your fences so that way they can't climb out and over your fences. So any toys that we have in our yard, we don't keep it close to the neighbor's fence because they could potentially hop over the neighbor's fence and I don't, we don't want that to happen. Um, so, all right. The area that we have them in um, is, let's see, these, this is 12 foot sections of board here. That's 10 foot section. So this is 10, 10, and then that's an 8 by 10 shed, so 8, 30, so roughly 40 feet this way, and roughly, oh, this is almost a square, so let's go, I'm going to say actually this is probably more like 50 feet, isn't it? No, because this is a 12 foot section too, 12 foot, 12 foot, 12 foot, so roughly 50 by 50, so that's what, what is that square footage wise? You lost me. I'm trying to do the area. So if it's a 50 width and 50 length, then the area, I don't know my math. Ella just explained this to me, how we figured this one out. 
right? Times, times. Mm -hmm. So a thousand square feet. Is that right? I have nothing. Sounds okay. That sounds about right. Because it's not a hundred square feet. Is it? No, because that would be 50 plus 50. So no, 25. So <laughs> 2,500 square feet? Does that sound right? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the, uh, so 50 by 50 is the area. You figure it out. Because that may be wrong. <laughs> it, this is the perfect size. These guys are actually really small. And it doesn't seem like from camera angle that this is a very big area. But it actually is when you get inside you're like oh wow there's so much more space if i had it to do over again i would have at least doubled the space um because that would give me more area for uh kidding stalls for separate kidding stalls when the goats are giving having babies like i said we have a nigerian dwarf breed um what we and I wanted them small specifically for a suburban backyard. I would not recommend bigger breeds because yes, they give you more milk, but you have more chances of escaping in a suburban environment. Um, what we did before we got them is we already had this shed. It was a chicken coop and a storage area for us. So we took the door out and we just converted it to a um, goat barn now and just like the chickens with the deep litter method in their coop I also do the deep litter method with the goats in here goats do need it cleaned out more than the chickens do so I just we just scoop it out and we toss it in the chicken run which is where I build my compost um, and then periodically we have to rake up the poo in here um, just to keep it a clean and tidy environment. Goats do smell. It can smell like a zoo back here or a barn. Um, so we control that. There's a, a stuff you can buy called PDZ. Um, any sort of like horse stall type thing is good for them. So like we do PDZ and we'll sprinkle it around. It helps to control the ammonia smell from their urine. We also have, you have equine pellets, which are these little compressed, like pine, compressed pine pellets that you can put down in there. And so when they urinate on it, it just expands. And that helps to control the odor. Um, but we make sure that anything that we put in there is safe for the goats to have. Um, and uh, also safe for our compost area. Um, because all of that ends up going into our bed and into our food. Okay. <laughs> the goats these so we have five back here um, this area responsibly I would not do any more than three this is plenty of space for five goats but I feel better with just three goats um, back here but we have some things going on uh, things are going to be changing and whatnot so I'm just kind of hanging on to these two little guys for right now. Um, they're both weathered. Um, one of them was born here on the property. Another one um, we bought from a friend. Um, the three females that we have, the does, this one, that's Greta. The brown one is Freya. And then that one over there, we have a video of her birth. That's, that's Esther. Um, all three of them have been bred. We have a friend who has a buck and we brought him over here. His name is Moose and we bred the girls last month and they should have gone back into heat last week, this past week, yeah, Christmas week and um, they did not. So that means all three of them are pregnant. Let's hope that they hang on to the pregnancy and in the beginning of May we should have babies from all three of them. Greta has had two babies here, and I have worked on the health of my goat herd, so that way I don't have to be involved in their kidding. And last, this past year, this past spring, uh, when she gave birth to Bucky, who's the little boy over here, the pre-
pretty little boy. He's the white one right there, white and black one. He's got all the spots. Roscoe's pretty too. Yes, Roscoe's pretty too. Um, she, I had checked her, um, and she wasn't in labor yet. And I decided to go take a nap. And then about an hour later, my daughter came out or came and woke me up saying that Greta had given birth. She was out here playing uh, soccer and all of a sudden she heard a little baby dick noise and Greta just birthed the baby without any issue. Um, that's what we want with the herd. We don't, I don't want to intervene um, when it comes to their birth. Um, obviously I will if I have to, but working on their health, that's the goal. Um, I want to talk about herd maintenance. Um, a lot of people, when you get goats, um, have to worm their goats all the time. Some of them will put them on the schedule, on a routine schedule. Um, when I do things, I try to think about how we used to do it before we got overly involved in the maintenance of the animal. When I bought my goats, because I knew I did not want to go into medicating my animals like everybody around here does um, I bought babies goats have very finicky stomachs so any sort of moving from one place to another can cause a lot of stress on them which can cause them to get sick and die so I didn't want goats that were already full-grown I wanted to form a relationship with my goats so we got them as babies and we raised them the way that I wanted them raised. I wanted them grass fed. I did not want them fed grain. I will get back to the grain topic in just a minute. Um, and I did not want them wormed on the regular basis. So I researched how to be able to do all of that before I got goats. Another thing that's kind of like a misconception about goats is that goats don't eat everything. Our goats are very picky. Um, and they like to <laughs> eat clothes. They, no, goats do not eat everything um, or just anything unless they're starving. If they're being fed correctly, they will not eat other things than what they are supposed to be eating. However, goats nibble on everything. They will try everything doesn't mean they're going to actually ingest it and eat it it means that they're going to nibble on it to see if it's good or if they want it all right good yeah okay another thing that people think is that they can maintain their lawn with goats that works if your lawn is like this high or very wooded and you have brambles everywhere goats do not eat down it's actually not healthy for them to eat down on the regular basis they need to eat up so goats eat up sheep eat down so think about that kind of stuff so when we built here come this way um, it's warm so flies are hatching so this is not cool but what we did is when we built their hay rack we built it to where their little heads will naturally go up to eat now goats are destructive we built this little we put this trough here to catch hay you see all of this down here and the spent hay we would take and we feed it to the rabbits because the rabbits don't care the goats don't like to eat down they want to eat up well when you have little baby goats they like to get on things and they like to push down and push down until it breaks we just haven't fixed it yet it's not gonna hurt them I'm not too terribly worried about fixing it right now um, it works and so I still can grab some spent hay and feed it to the rabbits that's how that works we usually keep the hay up here but it's in the garage right now it's easier to keep it here because it makes it easier to feed them and as someone who's allergic to hay uh, it's easier for me or anyone who else in my family camera lady is allergic to hay to just try and grab it and then put it in there <coughs> We're gonna get out of here before I start coughing. <laughs> we also make sure that they have fresh water on a daily basis. Fresh water, water is vital to a goat's health. And then they also have free choice minerals. And the things that we have here is baking soda. That's the baking soda. That helps if they ingest anything that disagrees with them, they can come in and eat this. This is um, sea kelp. 
Uh, kelp is really, really good for all your animals. It's also very good for humans. Um, it's rich in selenium. Most everyone is deficient in selenium. So I figured if I fed my goats selenium and then I consumed their milk, I would also be consuming selenium as well. This is just goat mineral. It has every other mineral that a goat needs. They have free choice to that. That needs to be refilled here soon. Um, the mineral that we get is supposed to help with not needing to worm your goats. I am not anti-worming. I just don't think worming needs to be done on a regular basis. Um, it is actually recommended now to not worm on the regular basis. Think of it as an antibiotic. You don't do antibiotics every single day or on the regular basis because you build up a resistance or a tolerance to that or the bugs do, the bacteria does, and um, you don't want to do that. So if my I check my goats on a regular basis, they check their eyes and check their poop a lot, if they are overloaded on worms, I will definitely worm them. But a lot of times, one of the things I've noticed, if I see clumpy poop or their eyes are just a little pale, not quite the bright pink that is good for them, then what I do is I just watch them. And most of the time they have, well, actually I take it back, every single time they have corrected themselves. Their body has done what it needs to do. Doesn't mean that well, that will be the case all the time, but I provide high quality feed. Um, they do get Timothy hay. I do not feed them Bermuda hay. It's I don't like it. I just think it's not healthy for them. It doesn't provide nutrients. It doesn't uh, provide what they need. So they have Timothy hay, free choice. They get alpha, alfalfa pellets every morning, sunflower seeds every morning. They have free choice minerals and we keep water clean water and a clean environment. And those things, I think, really, 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 really help with herd maintenance and being able to raise them well. Um, animals are really good about knowing what they need. And if you sit and watch your animals, you're also going to kind of pick up on what they need. But I don't stress too much about making sure they have all of all the things that other people will tell you. Um, I hesitate sometimes to talk about my goats and the way that I raise them because I still feel like I'm learning so much and I don't know that much about them. Um, but I've been doing this for three years. I have not, doesn't mean that I won't, but I have yet to have major health issues with any of them. Um, and I'm very, very happy with their overall health. Um, and so I feel like I can start talking more about feeding goats in a natural way without medication. Um, like I said, I'm not anti the medication. I just don't want to use it unless I need to use it. I want to talk about feeding your goats grain. I do not feed my goats grain on the regular basis. Um, it makes them fat. They have, and I think that also contributes to health issues, um, especially with kidding and um, and things like that. Having babies that are too big. Oh, y'all are gonna start fighting, and I'm gonna be in the way. Um, and so I don't I don't want those things. Um, goats would not normally be eating grain. Um, the only time they get fed grain is when they're being milked. I was against that at first, but when our first time milking Greta, after she had Esther, uh, she started losing a lot of weight because we were milking her, she was feeding a baby, she had just had, had this baby, and she had trouble, sorry, she had trouble um, keeping weight on, so I found a non-GMO organic grain goat for dairy goats and it helps to keep their weight up while they are milking and they only get grain on the stands only the does and milk get grain um, that helped to keep her weight up and keep her producing milk and I have no issue with that whatsoever yeah ideally you would have like a grass-fed I mean the ideal is the, the grass-fed goat and they only do that but sometimes it's just not working so do what you feel comfortable doing 
Um, our goats, for the most part, are very quiet animals. Um, they make noises when they're in heat, which is once a month, and that's for a few days. And then um, if they're out of something, we have a our goat, Freya, this one, the brown one. She will always let you know if they're missing something, if they're out of hay or if they don't have any water. Um, or if there's something in the goat yard, because we've had what, we've had stuff in the goat yard before and she kind of freaks about, freaks out about it and she lets you know. Like I think there was a rat in there and then um, there's also a, a skunk at one point in time. That was super fun. Um, I guess that's kind of it, really, as far as my goats go. Um, oh, another thing, uh, goat manure, um, so the little poo pellets, is um, also good for your garden, just like a rat. Oh, man, you really gnawed on that. Oh, that's gross. Um, just like rabbit poo, it's considered cold manure, so you can apply it directly to your garden. I don't generally do that so much with the goats as I do with the rabbits, because um, the goats also urinate a whole lot more than the um, than the rabbits do, and so we just we just rake it out and we add it to the uh, to the chicken run to their compost. They also get um, when I go and I trim my trees, my fruit trees and stuff. They get those things. We grow leafy greens specifically to not only feed us but to feed them. Um, they get herbs, things like that. Um, I try not to grow anything in my backyard that they cannot also have. Um, so it's super, um, and then that way it keeps the guessing out of me going, oh, I can't remember, can they have this? I just go ahead and research what they can and can't have. And I try to make sure like certain flowers and things like that I don't grow because that way I'm not having to think about it. So if I had to do this over again, or start again knowing what I know, I would definitely make their pen at least twice the size. Um, so that way I could have separated covered spots for kidding. And um, that way the mom can bond with the babies without, it does not work having the goats out here and having a baby because goats are territorial. They will be mean and beat up on the baby and we don't want that to happen. Um, mom usually needs some time, especially a first time mom, bonding to that child or the kid. And um, stop, dude, that hurts. Um, <clears throat> and so I must taste really good or I must look like food because they're doing a lot of nibbling. Um, and, but yeah, just a bigger, bigger area. Um, like I said, things are going to be changing for us this year, so I'm not too concerned about that right now. Um, and uh, I will have to think about the kidding time come May about what I'm going to do because I have all three of my does due at the same time. Um, that's going to be fun. Greta, I'm not too worried about for her. Um, Esther, not worried about her because she's Greta's daughter. So Greta is really healthy with her. So Esther has been really healthy and will continue. Freya, I do worry about a little bit because she is a first time mom and she's a little bit older than what I would like for a first time mom. Um, and she's just kind of a little bit more on the heavier side. But we're going to work on their health over the winter time and all during their pregnancies to make sure that they're super healthy and strong for, um, for kidding because that's, and then we'll be in milk and I'll get a bunch of milk, or more milk than I've been getting because they don't give tons of milk. But I like milking, so it's cool. We can cut that part out. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Right? Right? Oh, stop, dude.